Son of a... Oh. Hello. Welcome back. I have a little bit of an issue here. Let me set this down and explain. All right, so. If you're new here, welcome. This is G's Garage, I'm G. Last video, we were working on nutsers and this radiator shroud. So we got that all done, got that all in. Now we're trying to figure out, or I'm trying to figure out how to mock this stupid thing up. Um, we're not dealing with a lot of room, as you can see. It looks like a lot of room, but you go and you put all that there, all that shrinks up real quick. So along with putting this in, I also want to start figuring out how to make this sucker do that. Like that, yeah. And I can't do that without that. Because without that, I don't know how close I can be with this. So, I think I got some ideas. I took one side of this off. That side used to look like this side. So I think what we're gonna end up doing is taking this one off, flipping it, so it comes out the front here, and then I can mount from there. And then I can save some mounting room here. You see that? Ooh, does Kai have a good idea? Maybe, probably not. You tell me, I'm not sure. All right, let me cut this off real quick. There we go. I like that tool. World's greatest tool. The best part. Look at a little damage. Easy. Ready to go. All right. There we have it sitting in there. So right now we have, oh, where is that? Eh, inch. An inch. That's not too bad. Um, I can deal with that is kind of sitting back a little bit so when i bring it eh, when i bring it forward we got about a pretty decent amount there um so here's the body line see that radiator's literally going straight through it so why don't we just kind of give her the one two see i'm happy i'm happy with about that distance that's not bad i can live with that and if we look down the body line you stay put. All right, so we look through here. There we go, let's get you there. All the way through, we're pretty darn straight. So the reason why I need to bring this as far back as possible is, like I said earlier, make it do this number, yes. Well, it's probably not gonna be in this video because that's a lot of work, so I'll run it through with y'all, all right? I'll run it through with y'all. Right here, this is the idea. Ooh, fancy. So this is off of an old parallel bar that I had laying around. This is a half inch clevis. What I was thinking was we find a nice little place down here on the frame. In between here, yeah, you see it's kind of tight, right? Within the body line here. And I build a little tab that will come up and then intersect a bar that goes all the way across on the bottom. Right there, right in there. And then we have these old mounting holes on each side. So maybe come through and make a plate that will either span here or here and then come up off the frame rail right, right there and up and hit into this. Oh, that's the same over there. And then from that same lateral bar, 
come up and go. Yeah, probably right in here, somewhere. Just so we have structure throughout the whole thing when it tilts. Uh, now the reason that I'm making it tilt is because that thing is kind of down in there. And these are, you know, a little bit tall. So working on this thing, I just want to make it as easy as possible. Because if you're down in here and you're trying to do work, it's going to be a pain in the butt. There's just not much room. So if we can make this get over here out of the way, then we got all the room to play. All right. So let me set up the laser real quick. We'll shoot a beam and then we'll figure out exactly where our radiator can be. Right now it's just sitting on the water pump. Ilk. What we got? Yeah, yeah. We got a finger. So that's kind of the game plan right now. The laser. The girl's best friend. You ready for this action? Ooh. Like a gosh darn transformer. Okay. So because we're just going to that that seam, right? It doesn't really matter where it's tilted this way, where the fender kind of comes in at a backwards angle. Oh, somewhere. Oh. Engineers, can we do that? Can we just blame engineers? So, oh good. We're just gonna line it up on the edge there. And then we have our center line for that side. And then we'll come ac across, and we'll do the center line for that side. And hopefully everything works, right? Things and places, places and things, right? Hope I did that right. All right, let's mark that down there. Okay, where's that line down there? You can see it. All right, if I can see it, you can see it. Probably not, but we'll, we'll pretend. See, it exists. There's one right there. There's one there. All right, let me mark that real quick. side all right so now that we got our lines laid out we can now figure out exactly how far forward the radiator can go so let's put the radiator in and try to get it as close as possible so we have you know some clearance clearance oh man i hope the audio is good but we'll go from there All right, so we're dealing about eh, that much. If we do that, we got a half inch. Okay, in this corner, pretty good line there. Not too bad. Can we see it right there? There you go. Oh, there you go. Just need some shadowing, some dark light. There you go. Nothing like good old T-square. Missing uh, the T part. It's over there. It's on the workbench. I was doing something with it. All right. So, look down there. Eh, a little bit. Look down here. Eh, a little bit. So, from here, what I'm thinking, let me grab one. Where'd he go? Oh, there's one. Ooh. Not too bad if I do say so myself. My dad always called those the world's greatest tools. So, if we come over here now and re weld that, then we can get over there and come up for a radiator mount. 
and did not be in the way over here. I mean, boys, it was hanging off out there. It was big. Also, it was kind of a pain in, pain in the butt to get out. You didn't think those little wings would really, you know, add that much. But that's about where it was. Yeah, right about there. Mm -hmm. So you had to come over and everything. Hopefully this way you can just kind of like, you know, it's going to be like that now. like a glove all right well i guess next step is to uh well clean these sides up a little bit get a little acetone clean that clean that and buzzes them all in well if you ever mess up i know you do dave steve i know you messed up well, I messed up. And I tried welding with my TIG torch with my gas off. Zero argon. It's supposed to be 100%. Zero. 100% oxygen. All right. And that's kind of what happens when she flashes up on you real nice. She gets all chalky and gross. Let me find the, uh, the tungsten. Where do I put the tungsten? She ain't supposed to look like that. So, might try to clean that up and save her. Shit's expensive. That. Oh, you're gonna focus. That's what it's supposed to look like. Nice, pretty, shiny. Well. Let me get this all sorted out, that clean dip, and we'll get back at it. All right, we got this one. Turn around, right there, yeah, it was right over there. Turn around, actually, no, I messed that one up. It was over here, I took it off, I put it back over here, then I took it off again, and now it's back over here. Yeah, uh, it's late, it's like midnight. All right, this one's good, over here. So all I'm using, is this T-square section. I got it clamped down. I'm running that down to my frame row. See that? So now all I have to do is mark it. And then I know exactly where I need to put the bracing for this. Bracing, mounts, whatever it is. You know, that thing. <laughs> all right, so once I get those marked, we did a little frame rail. Then I can start building out my radiator stays. All right, so I moved this to the back side of here because why put it here and cram up space this way when I can put it here where there's already losing, we're already lost the space, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go scoop, come on. There we go. That side is done and dusted. What's up everybody? So, I lied. It is the next, next night. Still working on the radiator though. So when I when we left, we we're making the template for the actual upper radiator uh, supports or the side supports. So I'm gonna walk you through how I like to do it. Um, usually I like to use like, um, a cardboard, like, um, like from a soda box, beer can box, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this one, it's just the way it was kind of where the holes were and stuff is kind of a pain in the butt. So I actually used, um, clear packing tape and then I was able to cut out the holes there. And then I had a perfect template I could pull off, put on and mark my holes and then I can figure out exactly what I wanted it to do. Let me walk you over to the welding table and we will just kind of sit down and talk our way through it. All right, so the way I usually like to start is with, you know, an actual piece of cardboard. Don't have that luxury today. So here's just a piece of mild steel coupon I have. Here's our 
shipping tape, right? So you can see what it looks like. It's the one with the actual uh, thread through it. So it's super durable. Now, you don't wanna just put this on your frame or whatever you're doing uh, without kind of detacking that tape. Now, how do you detack that tape? Literally just like put it on some clothes, get some fuzz on there, just so it pulls off easier. Now that we have that, we had our holes cut out, we just have to find center of the coupon and center of our holes. And then we can lay it out accordingly. So let's do that. So we know our coupon is two inches, right? So we need a one inch mark at each side. So one, one, All right, so we got our horizontal. Then let's go through. It's a four inch coupon, so two by four. There is center, right there, that one. Now, we come here, we find the center measurement of our two holes, right? And then we can just kind of figure out where the center of these holes are, just kind of by kind of eyeball them. I kind of like doing that, just kind of eyeball them. We line up the center line and the center line of the holes, all right? Push it down in the middle, work your way out, work your way out. And there we go. All right, there's our two holes. Now these are a half inch, so we can go through, we can find center on that. And we're just gonna yeah, eyeball it. Eagle eye that son of a gun. All right, and if we wanna check, I already made one here. You can see it. Boom. Exact, exact template. Perfect. Exactly what we needed. So, when marking, or when, when getting this side cut, I have an older coupon here that I really like to use. Now, the way I like to do it is I'll do the exact same thing. I'll mark our centers so it turns into a bullseye there, right? And then I can just kind of move it along until I figure out exactly what my spacing for this radius is going to be. If I want it there, I can do it there. Something just like that, right? There we go. That side. Do the same thing on the other side. And there we go. We got our template. So first things first, I like to come through, I like to center punch these. So we'll center punch that. Then I like to come through, cut these, grind it. Then I'll do a pilot hole, the main hole, and then that's it. Pretty simple. Um, no need to overcomplicate anything. And now um, for attaching to the actual vehicle, we had these two holes on both sides. Um, I double checked this one on the other side and it's the exact same. So when we're all well and good, 
we'll have two identical matching pieces that will work exactly the way we want it. Now, fun fact, last video was a nut cert video, I'm using them again today. And I mean, there's no reason not to, it's perfect for this situation, especially because we don't want this hard mounted to the frame. Cause then if we do get into an accident, God forbid, or we have to get in there and maintenance something, they're just gonna be in the way, right? So we just make these, they come off real quick, two bolts, the radiator comes down, or gets out of the way and we're good to go. Solid and secure, serves its purpose without being super heavy. Now I did jump ahead and we got the uprights here, okay? That will weld onto here, like that. And then got a piece of eighth inch flat stock, just like that. I think it's an eighth by an inch. And then we'll take this and we'll weld that like that. So that way, if something does have to change, we can change it. I know it's probably kind of hard to see because my hand's in the way and I don't have nice petite hands. So yeah, something like that. Boom. See? We're gonna do the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. No reason to overcomplicate this. It's funny because you're trying to build, you know, specialty parts for a vehicle, but still make it universal. What sense does that make? There you go. A little bit of tape. And you got two matching pieces. You know, just got to think a little bit about a little bit. See? Perfect. Exactly what we needed. It's going to be perfect. Bolt these on to the sides of the frame. Then we'll be able to think about tack welding it while it's in the vehicle. And we might have to bend it a little bit because, I mean... It's a 70 year old truck frame right in the front. The rest is rebuilt, but the front's still the same. So it can add a little tilt to it every once in a while. So we'll uh, we'll put these in. We'll take our rod, figure out exactly where that needs to be. Um, I mean, she, she, we can just mark it. We mark it and then weld it over here with the TIG welder so it's nice. We don't have a bunch of BS to deal with, you know? So let's... Uh, well, let's drop it, I guess. All right, as you can see there, we have our plates mounted on each side. And then we have uprights cut. Let's get them. All right, yep, there's our uprights. Just a couple little tig tacks. A little bit of a run on the backside, pretty. Um, and now we just need to figure out how these suckers are gonna line up from down there to up there. Um, it should be easy going. I mean, we should be able to figure this out. So what I think we're gonna do is we're going to, so I made these separate, so just, just like that. So I made them opposite of each other. Yep, there you go. Yeah, so we can, Either if this one fits better on this side or the other side, we can do that. Like I said earlier, right? It's the hardest thing to make specialty parts, but keep them universal. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just part of this game we call life. So let me figure this out real quick. And as soon as I do, I'll bring you back in. All right, so. There we go. We have built out our radiator stays. One side, two sides. Let's see if you can see it there. So, there we go. So it's just gonna be on the back side there, going down, going down, a couple of bends, right to our mount. And 
There you go, right to our mount. So we'll get all this um, tacked up, put it back in, retest the fit, and we shall go from there. It's coming together. And I will, once I get these out of here, I'll go over how exactly all these are made. And it's funny because I made pasture side first and I bent it the wrong way. So instead of coming out, it went in. I was like, oh my goodness, Kat, you're an idiot. Well, anyways, got that all fixed. And I was actually able to pretty much take this side, clamp it to this side and just match the bends. And it's perfect. I did tweak a little bit on the bottom down here just to make sure it came in flat. But I mean, that's easy. I mean, super easy. We got ample room all the way around. We're not getting in the way of anything. Not going to get in the way of anything. Our radiator is nice and tall. Filled the grill. All right. And then we got perfect spacing. Perfect spacing. Exactly what we needed. It's going to be great. And if you guys have any suggestions on how to do this better or more efficiently, please let me know. I think this is like the second time I've ever done this. So, I mean, it looks good. Exactly what it is. And not, yes, this side is a little bit taller, but it's by design because I need a place to mount my overflow tank and it's going to just right, right there, right there. So I have a little bit more metal. I got about, I don't know, three inches from the top of the, that mount to here. So I can mount right there. Or, yeah, here we go. I can mount right here and then radiator overflow right there. Done. Keeping it simple by design. Okay. I'm going to, Pull the old Multimatic over. Hit with two little tacks on each side. Then pull them and finish weld them out. Okay, so here are two radiator stays. Pretty close, don't they? Yeah, it's almost identical, man. Like, it's, it's insane. So... Here's the actual section that connects to the radiator itself. There's our bottom mount. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna weld through down here, just do a nice little root pass. And first we gotta clean that up a little bit. I got a little burn on our darn nigs. And then we'll come through. We'll finish up a nice little couple beads through here. Do the same on the back side. Just finish it off. And that should be plenty. I mean, it's just an aluminum radiator, right? Do that on both sides. And then we need to space out some good mounting holes on here. And then once we have these marked and drilled, then we'll just lay it up against the radiator and we'll mark and then drill the radiator out. Just make it simple. Um, I might even, I'm thinking about doing it. You know what I'm thinking about doing? Nut certs. It's just, it's gonna make sense. Just make everything as easy as humanly possible. You don't wanna be fiddling with a nut and bolt on this. It's just gonna be a pain in the butt. So let's, uh, let's get this all finished welded out and we'll go from there. Say so myself. So now we just gotta let those cool off 
Once they're done, we can drill our pilot holes so we know exactly where we're going to mount everything up at and throw some nut certs in and we're good to go. On that, on that note, I don't think there's much more. If you never mess with nut certs or we'd like to learn more, go to the last video. It's there. But on that note, thank you so much for watching. If you stayed this long, subscribe, like, tell your friends, you know, tell your pastor, your grandmother, who cares, right? And always make it faster. Mm -hmm.